Welcome back, Seth Bling here. Today I'm going to show you my design for a pulse multiplier. Let me show you what that means. I'm going to push this button here, and the piston is going to fire five times. Five times and it's done. Uh, let, me, so let me show you that again. One, two, three, four, five. So that's all the circuit does, uh, but it's very customizable. So if you want a number, different number of pulses than five, for instance, you can see I've got five of these cobblestone. I actually meant to use regular cobblestone, but apparently I use cobblestone monster egg. We've got five of those in here. Uh, now it's ten. Doesn't matter what item, but you can put in any any kind of item there. And you can also configure the delay. So if I want more delay, I can uh, I can do that. And now this piston will fire ten times, and the clock will be slower. So it's a very customizable circuit. Uh, the delay and the number of pulses are both customizable, and you could expand this out more if you needed more delay. There is a minimum amount of delay, and that's what I was showing at the beginning of the video. With a, it's kind of a four tick delay, one, two, three, four, and that's the minimum amount just because it takes four ticks for the hopper to get rid of its item. So there we go, ten pulses very quick, and that's all customizable. So let me go over how this works. Uh, Okay, so we've got the, the 10 cobblestone items in the, uh, the, the, the dropper here. This dropper is pointing this way, so it's facing this hopper. This hopper is facing left, it's also, so, and then this one's facing left, and this one's facing left. So what we've got is a little, is a little clockwise loop. <coughs> when the dropper dispenses an item, it's going to go into this one, and then it's going to funnel back around into this guy. Except a lot of these hoppers are frozen. So... So what happens when we press the button? Okay, this is a little monostable circuit. Do note that this uh, this comparator is on subtraction mode, which is not the default mode. So I had to right click it. Oops, I had to right click it to get into that mode. And uh, and so when I press the button, that's a it's a monostable circuit. So it's going to cause a one tick pulse to go into uh, this block, and that's going to trigger the dropper. Now the dropper is going to dispense an item into this hopper, and the hopper will now have an item in it, and so that'll output through this comparator, a uh, little signal, one signal strength. <clears throat> and that's going to feed back through these repeaters into this block, which is, again, going to trigger the dropper. So we have sort of a, a loop in which the dropper dispenses an item and it triggers the dropper again. <coughs> Excuse me. And so this loop is what causes the dropper to get rid of all of its contents. Now, as the dropper funnels the items into this hopper, the hopper is just going to pass the items along into this one. Now, what we'll see, I'm going to increase the delay a little bit here, what we'll see is that the items kind of pile up in this hopper, and they don't, they don't get put into the next hopper just yet, and then once all 10 items are in here, it drains back out into uh, this hopper, and then those drain back into the original dropper. <clears throat> so what causes that? Well, it's this comparator. It's this comparator coming off of the dropper, and... As long as there's any items in this dropper, it's going to go ahead and power this block down below, which powers this hopper. Basically keeps this hopper from dispensing or, you know, passing any of its items along to this one. And so when we start the circuit, this guy is frozen and it's going to stay frozen until all 10 items have been dispensed from this dropper. Once that happens, and that's what we saw, once that happens, this unfreezes and it starts putting the items into this hopper. But this hopper at that point will be frozen, and I'll start the circuit again. You can see, as soon as there's any items in here, it causes this comparator to turn on, which freezes this hopper. And then as long as there's any items left in this hopper, this one is still going to be frozen. So this guy will unload his, his uh, items into this one until it's empty. And then at that point, this one is free to put the items back into the dropper here. And so it's sort of a buffering system. Uh, I use this guy as the main buffer to, uh, to store the items so that they don't go back into the dropper so that it's not an infinite loop. Um, but then I need a secondary buffer because I don't, I, if, if, there, if this guy wasn't frozen, this guy would dispense item, or drop items right back into the dropper and it would start freezing this guy up again even though it still had items left in it. So that's what I use this secondary buffer for. So that's how it works, and that's <clears throat> that's why it only goes through the items once until it resets. It does take some time to reset, and if I push this button, you'll notice, uh, you know, that that's going to take 
a, you know, a few seconds for that to go up. Um, but even once this guy fills up, it takes about, oh, you know, five seconds before the dropper fills up again here. So, and we have to wait until this dropper is completely full in order to do the circuit again. So, uh, one way you can, uh, you can deal with that is, um, is, is you can do something a little bit like this. Let's see. Uh, it is basically, um, to reconfigure the circuit here. So now we're still going to freeze this hopper when this hopper has any items in it. But now I can get the comparator output from this hopper. And if I just put a torch and a lamp on here. So this lamp now indicates when the circuit is ready to go. Um, as long as there's either any items in this hopper or this hopper, uh, this block is, well, this comparator will be powered. Uh, the reason for that is there's two different ways this comparator can be powered. One way is that if this block is powered, it'll power this comparator. So that's what's going to happen if this hopper is powered through this circuit. Or, sorry, if this hopper has any items in it and it's powering through this circuit. The other way this hopper or this comparator can get power is if this hopper has any uh, items in it. And this is kind of a, a feature so that you can hide your comparators if, if you are... Uh, basically hide your comparators behind a wall. So if you have a hopper or a dropper or whatever, uh, or yeah, let's put a dropper here. So I can put a comparator over on this side and it's going to be able to pick up the signal through the wall. And you can see that turns the comparator on over here. So this is a way to do it. And, and uh, <clears throat> I push the button, this light will turn off and it won't turn back on again until both this dropper or the, sorry, this hopper and this hopper are empty. So you'll see it's off. Okay. This guy's emptying. Even when this is empty though, uh, this light still hasn't turned on. We have to wait till this one's empty. And once this one's empty, that means this one has all the items and, and we're good to go again. So this is, if you want an indicator light, you can slightly re reconfigure the circuit to do that. Uh, I think I've shown the circuit enough that, that you guys could probably rebuild it if you'd like uh, on your own. I think this is a pretty cool customizable circuit. It's uh, very compact and it it works for up to 576 pulses just based on this exact circuitry which is pretty cool, uh, although it will take a while to reset if you if you use it for that many. And also, uh, like I said, you can increase the amount of delay here by just, you know, adding more repeaters as, as desired. And um, so you can have the pulse, pulses be even slower if you'd like. Uh, again, there's a four tick limit on how quick you can make the pulses. So that's that's it for the pulse multiplier. Hope you learned something. Hope it's useful. Thanks for watching.